wouldn't lose. You know, if you really think about it, it's been 10 years. We've come a hell of a long way since playing Dissidia on a PSP. Now we're playing it on a full PS4 in 60 frames, 3 versus 3. This is astronomical. This is what I've always been wanting for at least 10 years since Dissidia came out. I'm a big Dissidia fan. So this is a video I'm very proud to get. Today, we're going to do a port versus port of the Dissidia games. More specifically, we're going to focus on the arcade version of Dissidia and we're gonna compare it to the port that actually came out as a beta. So if you guys are actually curious, Rico, how do you have footage from the arcade? Well, the thing is, me and my friend Eugene, we actually went to Akihabara, we visited uh, Japan last year, and they actually had the Dissidia arcade there. And the cool thing is, on the top of the arcade, there's a capture card. You put a USB device on top, you press the button, and you're already recording footage. Keep in mind, I will say this, the footage is in 1080p, but it's only in 30 frames. That was the speed that the capture card could actually do it. However, the footage that I captured on the PS4 is going to be full 60, so do not, so make sure that it's not going to hamper anything that's going to go on between them, just because one is 30, one is 60. So I want to tell you that straight up in front right now. So let's go, guys. Let's get into Dissidia NT for the PS4 as well as the arcade in Japan. As with all of my videos, I always want to start with an overview, give you guys what Dissidia actually is in case you aren't really sure what it is actually. So Dissidia is a three on three battle between three Final Fantasy characters of the universe. Pit each other against either heroes or villains or whatever kind of team you want to get. Basically in order to battle against your opponent, you basically have two attacks. You have your brave attacks, which are the regular attacks that you can use using X, and then you have HP attacks. So when you kind of keep grinding against your opponent, you build up to a certain number, the HP attack is gonna actually attack their HP like the name implies. Unlike the PSP version, this is a three on three battle, meaning there's actually a new counter on the top left. What this does, it allows you to see how many people have actually died after they've gone. After the three people have actually died, that team loses and the other team wins. The point of the game is to try to get defeat your opponent as many times as possible. Three, as the counter dictates. The game is fairly simple and it throws a couple things at you, such as summons, which is this crystal that is actually in the middle of the field. Your allies have to actually attack the crystal and that way it powers up your summon meter and lets you unleash this beautiful summon depending on which one that you actually pick. Each one of the summons has its own particular properties and actually special attack, so you have to choose what your strategy is. So this is what the city is. It is basically a battle arena in the style of Advent Children that allows you to pit Final Fantasy characters against each other. This is basically every Final Fantasy's wet dream right here. This is the PS4, it's looking fantastic. So we're gonna start moving on into the arcade version. I'm gonna give you a little bit of what's going on with it, what is the difference between these two games, and so let's start with the arcade, because there's actually some physical differences you guys need to know about this. One of my favorite things about the arcade for the city is actually this little thing called the Nesica card, which is a save card that's very similar to Bandai Namco Passport. But what it is, this saves all of your Dissidia data, as well as the rhythm, different kinds of games. You could pick this up at Akihabara, this is where I picked it up. Or if you have a local round one, you can actually purchase it from there for about seven to ten dollars. This is what you need in order to save the game and play. You could also access your account online, change a couple things that actually makes it unique for the city title, which I'm gonna get into in a bit. So what makes the Nesica card so special is that you could actually access it using online. You go into your account and you can access different things in terms of Dissidia, such as changing your costumes and your weapons. You can only do this online. You cannot do this on the interface on Dissidia, but it adds a cool little level of interactivity that you really couldn't do in most arcades. So this is what makes it usually specific and unique to Japan. So now that you have your card set up and ready, we're gonna go play some Dissidia. So upon first inspection, when you go and into the arcades in Japan, you're gonna be greeted with this gigantic cabinet with two flight sticks and a crystal in the middle. So let me get to explaining this. First of all, the two flight sticks is gonna be your control scheme. It looks a little wonky, trust me, but it actually works quite well. It feels very comfortable in both hands and you can use the joysticks analogs on top of them. And it just feels great. You can use the left one like to strafe around with your character, the right stick to use the camera. It works well, trust me. 
The crystal in the middle is what you're going to use in order to use your summon. You pretty much press it, it's going to be glowing when your summon comes off. You press the button and you can unleash your summon. This is how the game is going to typically run. Japan was used as a testing ground, meaning Square Enix wanted to make sure that the city was tip top and ready for the states. So they used Japan as a literal testing field to make sure this game was working properly. You cannot play this game single player, you actually need three on three people, meaning you needed three physical people in one arcade in order to play it. You were actually playing online against different people in Japan. So for example, you can play in Akihabara and then you could always play a couple people in a different district in Tokyo. It was actually cool. The city of arcade cabinets are actually littered around Japan, so it isn't really too hard to actually find one. The main difference that you're going to find between this version as well as the one and the PS4 is a lot of the characters. So we do know a couple like Garland and such have been announced for it, but you will not be playing characters such as Ramza. Eugene is actually playing Ramza right now and you can see his playstyle and actually how it's going through. The game is very fluid, it is very beautiful, it plays fantastic, and it is incredibly addicting. It's a little more exhilarating with the fact that you can actually play against different people. And one of the cool elements that they added was that you could actually speak to the other opponent during the waiting room. So basically you could hear Tita say, and different other stuff that you could hear that you really wouldn't hear in the original The City. So it's a little cool. They also did bring this in the PS4. I'm going to touch upon that in a bit. But basically, the way that you see the arcade, we're going to get into the PS4. And let's be honest, the gameplay is pretty much the same thing. You're not going to be getting too much anything that's new here. Like I said, the gameplay is recorded at 60 frames. The capture card in the arcade version sets it to 30, so keep that in mind. So when you play the Dissidia NT version, you are greeted with a menu that lets you choose whatever language you want to, whether Japanese or English, as well as the text. You can choose dual audio, which is fantastic for beta. I thought this was a great choice that Square actually did. So you can actually listen to the original arcade sounds that you would have actually heard and you can also switch to the English if you so prefer. Gotcha. Ready to kick some butt. And getting into the actual voice acting, yes, all of the English cast that you remember from the original City have returned. Johnny Young Bosch is coming back as Furion. James Arnold Taylor is coming as Titus, and Steve Burton is coming as Cloud. All the original people that you remember from the original Dissidia have came back in their English form to reprise their roles. So this pretty much plays almost exactly the same like in the arcade version. It is almost exactly verbatim. So it is very nice to see the exact same experience we've got in Japan, the same one that I've played is the exact version you guys are getting. There's almost nothing of difference. The only thing that I think is very specific, and I will nitpick about this, is the actual control scheme. When you're playing the PSP version, we all know that HP attacks are square and brave attacks are circle, X is to jump. They switched this around a bit, so basically, your brave attacks are now X, your HP attack is now square, and your jump is circle. If you've played the original Decidia come into this, it is incredibly wonky and it feels weird. I do not remember this encumbrance and playing in Japan. This was only specific on the PS4, so I think this is something you guys need to, to keep in mind. Of course, you're not going to also get the character variety that you are used to in the arcade version, so of course, it's a beta, it's not surprising, but I think it's something well worth mentioning. But all the same mechanics are here, all the same summons, all the same characters, everything is here that you would actually remember. So keep in mind we're getting the exact same experience that you would expect. And finally, like I always like to do in all of my port versus port titles, this is going to be a direct comparison of both the arcade version as well as the PS4. And just for a little bit of posterity's sake, we're going to actually toss in the PSP version of Dissidia. Keep in mind, this is only focusing on the PS4 and the arcade, but like I said, I'm tossing the PSP one in there just to see how far that we've come. To see this little damn handheld compared to these big, huge, blown up games that we're usually getting. Now keep in mind the arcade version is at 30 frames per second because that's how it was actually captured. The footage that I captured is at a full 60 frames and this video is outputting at a full 60 frames. So you're going to see the differences in what I'm actually trying to say, but keep in mind this is not to hamper the arcade. So without further ado, here's a little bit of the gameplay that you guys can see for your own eyes. See a little bit of stuff that maybe I haven't mentioned. And tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Dissidia Final Fantasy.
Let's end this. Huh. Yet another stop on my journey. Gotta give it a hundred and ten percent. So I know I haven't really done a port versus port like this before just because I'm actually comparing an arcade cabinet to an actual port of uh, a beta but i thought it was actually really cool to see since we already have footage of the arcade and might as well you know combine it with uh the beta see how it goes see what we both think a little bit of the differences and hopefully see what we're gonna get at the end of the day when the game releases in january of 2018 so thank you guys so much for coming and i really do appreciate it if you guys can please give some love and shout outs to my friend Typhoon Bang. It was because of him that I was actually able to get the footage back in Akihabara when we were both in there. So it's great to see all the gameplay and everything that we were able to get. So thank you, man. You, you know I love you, brother. Thank you. And if you're interested in seeing me do other stuff as well, I actually Twitch 6 p.m on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm actually changing my schedule just because a couple things are coming up. So my schedule won't be as consistent as it used to. However, I'm still playing games. Currently, I'm playing Yakuza Kiwami. I love this game so much. So if you guys want to see it, check it out. I'm definitely going to play it. So thank you guys so much for coming in. Like I said, videos are going to come out not as frequent as they used to just because I'm starting to get busy with life and everything. I'll keep you guys updated with what's really going on later. But uh, thank you guys for holding on. I'll do as much as I can, and I'll talk to you soon. The pilgrims are gathering the marching band. The marching band's howling. The fashion is the flag of righteousness.